All right. Welcome to DevOps Dispatch. I am Tim Banks, the developer advocate at Dell Technologies. And with me joining is the illustrious Kelsey Hightower. Kelsey, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit of what you do right now? Uh, I'm at KubeCon. <laughs> KubeCon is uh, a lot of people don't know the origin story around KubeCon. I meet a lot of people. They say, hey, I've been to all the KubeCons. I said, what was the first one? And they'll say the first one was in Seattle. I was like, yes, that was a, definitely a KubeCon in Seattle, CNCF KubeCon. But it predates that by at least a year or two. Right. The first one was in uh, San Francisco at a hotel. And two people that are often forgotten, Patrick Riley and Joseph Jacks. Some people know Joseph Jacks from OS Capital. He's a venture capitalist yeah. now. Yeah. And we were at a GopherCon one year, maybe the third year that GopherCon, which is the Go Programming Language Conference. We were doing it in Colorado and Denver. Mm -hmm. He was like, we need something like this for the Kubernetes community. And remember, Kubernetes was super tiny. Yeah. Everyone was still talking about Mesos, still talking about OpenStack. And Kubernetes is this new thing. And we wanted to be really community oriented. So Patrick Riley kind of put up the money. Kismatic, little small startup, smaller than CoreOS. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we're going to have something just, just for the community. And they're like, Kelsey, you in? I was like, yeah, I'll MC. I'll be the program chair and we'll figure it out. Yeah. And so then we went out there and we got a few sponsors. Nothing like this. This is a trade show now. It is. It is wild. It is absolutely wild. If you, I'm, I'm sure if somebody had told you, giving you a little snapshot of what this conference looking back then, you would have told them there was, there was a lie. Well, you know, at that time, I felt like we were already part of the Docker community. So the Docker community was already popular. Mm -hmm. The Docker community was already getting 5,000 people at their conferences at that time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt like we were an extension. We were a plug-in because we were literally built on top of Docker. That's right. We just wanted something that could be just for the Kubernetes folks, right? A way we can just come talk about Kubernetes. But it wasn't like we were departing from the container ecosystem. We were already part of it. So in my mind, it didn't need to be big. Mm -hmm. It just needed to exist and it needed to be pure. Yeah. And so Golang had a very pure conference where it's just for the community so it felt like everybody was connected mm -hmm. so in those early days the things that i was trying to push was and i remember when i was emceeing i kept changing my shirt every time i went on stage and i was going to go get t-shirts from all the little vendors the Come little on. sponsors yeah. you know like some people buy local right we know yeah. the big names they do pretty well they got great marketing budgets but if mm -hmm. you're just like a company with three people not a big budget give me your t-shirt Every time I went on stage, they would just see their logo on stage. They didn't have to pay for it. It wasn't part of a sponsor package. And so we wanted that community tighten it now to your question. It's 2023 now. Mm -hmm. There's probably been almost 20 KubeCons if you count the Europeans and all the other countries where yeah. KubeCon shows up. And I still think even though it's big, there are a lot of people that still have that fabric of community. Like it's a reunion for a lot of people. Yeah. Some people are out here shopping like it's a mall buy this product, buy that product. But there's a lot of people who build together, mm -hmm. maybe don't get to meet in person all the time. And KubeCon is still that place where you get to have that reunion. Yeah, I I, I think it's really interesting. And I, I, you know, I want, there there are folks who are very new to the Kubernetes community, right? And I've had conversations even here. It's like, why is Kelsey Hightower so important to this community? And it's not an overstatement to say that this would not exist without you, right? Kubernetes would exist, but not in the way it is now. And in two different ways. Yes, you have led the way in the technical instruction to give people the tools they need to, to, to be able to use Kubernetes, employ Kubernetes. But more importantly, the thing that you just talked about with putting on the shirts, you've done a lot to build the community, meaning the, inter, the interaction and the engagement of the people who are in the Kubernetes community. And that I feel like is far more important to these conferences than technical demos. And things like that. Yes, those things are very, they're, they're good, they're nice, but the engagements you have, the talking to people, the meeting the people and saying like, hey, yeah, no, that's a great idea. Here's what I think about that. I think that's what's core. And you've always done that really, really well. The first time I heard that was probably from uh, Brendan Burns, right? So, you know, the founding team of people that were working at Google at the time that did you know, the origins of Kubernetes. And I was working at CoreOS when I was a contributor. And I think they were getting interviewed. And I remember Brendan saying, it doesn't get this big without the Kelseys, right? The people who are out here, not just contributing code, not just speaking in front of people, but really kind of providing like 
the guidelines for people, meeting people where they're at and then showing them what's next. Yeah. And it made it so inclusive for people. They're like, yo, is this too new for me? It's like, no, you already know 80% of it. If you know Linux already, you're 80% of the way there. If you're in the Docker community, you're 90% there. Mm -hmm. Here's the 10%. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it feels like. And don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Yeah. And then here's the instructions. And then stepping back and giving them those prototypes. So they go out and build their own things. And then you look up, they go from building prototypes to starting companies, to being hired as the lead engineer at a company that doesn't have any talent in the space. That to me has been the biggest part of watching all the seeds get planted. Mm -hmm. And then you do your book signing and then you watch the, you watch them blossom and they tell you their origin stories. Mm -hmm. Every time I sign a book, it can be 400 books in a row. Each person comes up and they tell you their origin story. Yeah. I was a teacher two years ago. Now I'm doing Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. I was stuck in like Unix world or windows world. And now I'm in this space and it feels exciting again. Yeah. And I want to thank you for that. And to me, that's the part that I enjoy most about this whole journey. There is um, a thing that I've seen at this conference that I haven't seen at other conferences for community is the way that we recognize people who do the work, you know, the, the Chop Wouldn't Carry Water uh, uh, Awards. And, and the way that folks contribute to this community, I think, is, is super critical and is recognized in this community, way, like I said, way better than I've seen in other ones. And what I think is so, so intriguing and, and not even intriguing, it's, it's interesting in a way that excites me is that the, the demographics of the people who contribute in this is far more diverse than any other community I've seen. And I think that is not, it is not a coincidence, right? That the Kubernetes community has been able to explode and take off like it has and, has, and have the impact that it has. Because as you said, it has been more inclusive people from different backgrounds, from different you know, walks of life. All kinds of these people come together with their set of experiences and contribute to this thing because it does cover a lot of people's needs. I think we also are living in the world of where social media is really where a lot of people go and check for what should I be paying attention to? Mm -hmm. And then people are subscribing, not just waiting for the newsletter to show up. People want to subscribe 24 seven to the people who are out here building the technology. So you intersect that with, and let's give it credit. I think the tech industry has made progress because now this stuff is global. Mm -hmm. It's not just like Fortune 500s that are using the tech. It's like global. Every country's now involved. And now those countries are going from consumers to contributors. And now everyone's getting to show their work in public. Thank you, GitHub. Yeah. Thank you, social media. And so now if you bring all of that together, and I think a lot of people are realizing if you have a big marketing department, but you got someone that can actually tell the story a little bit better, that you can with an ad, mm -hmm. then that person typically rises up to be the interface between what you're trying to do and your customer base. And I think now we're understanding that it's okay to share the credit with the people that are actually creating things. It's not just write the software, we'll package it, sell it, and celebrate the revenue. People are not just buying tech anymore. They're joining communities. That's it. That's what it is. And, and I think when we look at like the vendor space around here, one thing I do appreciate is that those vendors are a lot of times contributing, whether it's finances, whether it's, uh, whether it's talent, whether it's just sponsoring a space for people to get together. Like, you know, it's like, it's kind of that, that lift where you stand uh, uh, kind of feel. It's like, you know, a lot of people are just doing whatever they can. And I think that's one of the things we talk about it being an inclusive community. It's like, you don't have to be a superstar developer. You can just be someone with some good management, project management skills and you can contribute. Right? But you know what's even doper? You can not have any affiliation with none of the big companies. Mm -hmm. You may not even be the top contributor to any repositories. And you can tomorrow decide that you want to start learning any of these new technologies that are coming out and publish your results. Hey, I'm new to AI, ML. I trained my first model. I'm going to walk you through everything. And instantly, the people in the community are like, yo, okay. Yeah. Someone's willing to train willing to teach, willing to educate, and then you will find yourself in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. And you can decide as you go deeper, as you get more mature in your career, maybe your contributions will actually change. Yeah, You don't need permission no more. You You're jumping out there and you are instantly in the game. I think it, I, one thing I like, and you and I, you know, we're longer than two in this game. We've been around for, for a minute. So watching some of these 
you know, fresher folks who are fresher either in their career, or just, just younger in general, coming up and really thriving. And like, it gives me so much hope in this, you know, to see like the fruits of the things, you know, the, the, the things that, that you laid down and others like you laid down to watch it bear fruit in like this next generation of, of engineers and developers and, and community members. I'm like, gonna tell you the dopest thing. When I was 18, I didn't know anybody that looked like me at tech. Maybe I wasn't looking in the right place. Uh, you were, I'm the same way. But yeah. I ain't know nobody. And I remember meeting some people that are new to the game and they say, hey, my manager said, we trying to hire somebody like Kelsey. Do you know him? And then they go watch all the videos, listen to the podcasts, hear how I talk, the natural vernacular. Right. Are those the new J's he wearing? <laughs> and it's like, Kelsey seems to represent the whole person. Mm -hmm. And Kelsey looked like me. Their confidence level go up. Yeah. They like, yo, I thought you were going to say like this other template or like this other stereotype. Mm -hmm. But you said like, Kelsey, oh, I'm halfway there. Right. And I think that to me has been whatever impact it has had. And it's not just me. There's lots of other people from different backgrounds. But whenever someone is like, we've seen what we think we want as part of our team. And we're looking for people like that. Yeah. And what that does to all the hiring managers that puts that out there in the world, it gives a whole nother group of people confidence to even apply. Right. It's, it's funny. When we were kids, right, you would see like posters or magazines of people that looked like us, the brown and black folks. They were sports stars, right? Maybe they were actors, right? They weren't moguls of business. They weren't technology leaders or anything like that. That's changed, right? And, and it hasn't come far as far also, as we I've been seeing people that are like well dressed into fashion, right. into art, into all these other backgrounds. And I've been so happy that tech is losing that stereotype that you got to be the sis that man in the yeah. basement yep. coding yep. next to the washing machine. Look, now you could be a normal person right. that just happens to be in tech. Look, I, I keep saying next next year I want to see a sick fashion booth, right? Because, mm. you know, like we make a good amount of money in this industry, right? And so we can. Especially for folks that come we from- We can take a shower. Yeah, well, especially for co 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 folks who come from more economically disadvantaged backgrounds, this is the first time they've got money. Maybe they don't know how to buy this stuff. Maybe they don't know what to look for. And like, look, this is an open source community. We knowledge share. Like, you know, you like that person's like, you like that person's style? Look, man, go talk to them. Like, yeah, this and this and this. I save money by doing this. You know, this is how I do my makeup. This is how I do my hair. Like, anything like that. Like, the, it, our- our connection as a community doesn't have to involve simply lines of code. You know, one other area is financial. I've noticed a lot of people, this is the first time anyone in their generation, their family has ever made like six figures before. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't know what to do with it. Should they do that 401k? How much should they allocate? How much should they be saving? Do they really need to try to buy a car to impress all their friends that are yeah. in tech too? And it's like they don't they don't have that training, right? Maybe they don't come from a world where people do money management. No, they, and they think about those things. Nobody in their family has ever gotten RSUs or grants or options. Like yeah, oh, a hundred percent. So I think having some of that stuff, I mean, maybe we'll recommend that next time that there should be some basic financial education. We're not trying to sell people stocks. No, we just want to have people start to think about they're in a situation now. Fortunately, mm -hmm. they can start thinking about building wealth and making investments, and then investing in things that they believe in. Yeah, and and when you, it, you know, it all goes to taking care of the whole person. Like one uh, a drum I beat all the time is like, I can't. You can't just treat somebody like they're a worker, right? This is not. This is not a, a, a widget maker, right? If if I, I I've used the allegory of a tree before. Like if I want to have a fruitful tree, right? I can't just stick it in the ground, wait six months and start giving metrics to it, right? And like get dashboards and like, no, well, I gotta, gotta take care of it. I gotta keep it in the right amount of sunlight. I gotta water, I gotta check the soil. I gotta keep the bugs away from it. I gotta take care of this tree for years and years and years and years. And if I've taken care of that tree, right? If I've nurtured it, it will grow and it'll be fruitful and I can have more trees. But if I don't take care of that tree and only treat it like an apple producing machine, it will not thrive. And right now, it's raining and we in the rainforest. So there's room for everybody. I think people are starting to understand the earth is big. Mm -hmm. I think I saw something, maybe it's slightly off, but they said all the people shoulder to shoulder can fit in Texas. And just think about how big the world actually is. Yeah. So when you come into this space, and I think that's what we see when we walk around, there is room for everybody. everybody. You know, I just, just as we kind of close out and we're closing out the conference, because what's, 
what's the thing that you want to see going into the next KubeCon? What is, what is the torch you want to see? What is the thing that if you see this or see this trend or whatever, the next KubeCon is going to make you a happy man? I think just really the collective confidence. You know, I think in the early days, it was all about the builders, the maintainers, the new projects, the new ideas, the white papers, the protocols, the standards, open telemetry, Prometheus, Kubernetes. And so we spent a bunch of time experimenting. And for a lot of people that are reading the byproducts, the white papers, the, the docs, they're like, yo, what is this? We don't even get these concepts. And so a lot of people are just confused. And that confusion kind of leads to this bit of like tension in the community. Like it's too hard. It's too complicated. Yeah. While those things are true, they're under put, they're underpinned by, I don't understand even what this is. So what I want to see continually going forward is these things now become fundamentals. Yeah. Like for a lot of people, SSH is just fundamental. We know yeah. how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Bash scripts. We know how that works. It's fundamental. So then people just do stuff with it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking forward to now is just like things slowing down a bit. The clarity sinks in. Mm -hmm. And when we get this stuff to be just fundamentals, then we get the network admin who's been ignoring Kubernetes for 10 years. Yeah. They come in and say, oh, this is L3 routing. Yeah. Oh, that's BGP. Oh, these names are just names, but these are the same fundamentals. Same fundamentals. Then we're going to start getting a whole nother batch of creativity. Yeah. That's when we start getting those. You, you've seen those weird one-liner Perl scripts oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. power whole businesses. We need to get to that mode where this stuff is so fundamental that people feel like they spend less energy learning mm -hmm. and fighting confusion. Right. And they spend more time creating and showing people all those gaps that we are too busy to see. I love it. Kelsey, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. I really appreciate it. All, all best wishes and success for you in the future. Awesome. Thanks for having me.